Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson we're going to be learning finger picking etude number 12. So this tune, as you heard, has an eastern sounding influence and the way that I achieved that sound was by composing the piece out of gypsy major. So this is a scale that has a really exotic sound. Let me go ahead and play it for you and I'll put the tab up here. So this scale can be thought of, for those of you who study music theory, as Phrygian dominant with a natural seven. But for those of you who are newer to the music theory and studying scales, then you can think of it as a major scale with two alter notes. It has a flat two and a flat six. So if I call it this formula, I have one, flat two, three, four, five, flat six, seven, one. So just by altering two notes of the major scale, we create this really exotic Eastern sounding scale. So really, really neat stuff. If you're new to music theory and to understanding how scales can be altered, when first, how they're formed, then I would highly encourage you to check out our music theory course, which dives deep into the theory behind scales. So let's talk about this lesson. This lesson I have split into two parts. This is the part one lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be learning melody A and melody B, so two thirds of the song. If you guys wanna learn melody C, we're gonna be covering that in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link right here to check out the entire lesson, or you can go to the site and do a search for finger picking etude number 12. There you'll also be able to find the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format and get access to the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed, just a really great asset in getting a tune like this down that much easier. Okay, so let's jump into melody A. So melody A is eight bars in length, but we do have some repetition, so we only have six bars to learn. So let me play the first bar and then we'll break it down and learn it. So here's what it sounds like. So pretty simple, right? So the first thing I want you guys to do is get that stuck in your head. Ba -da -da -da. So you wanna get that melody and that rhythm stuck in your head. Now the rhythm is pretty simple. It's a dotted quarter followed by an eighth and then two quarter notes. So we have one and two and three, four. So if I play it and call it out, I have one and two and three, four. Now if you're new to understanding rhythms, then check out this lesson really quick. It's gonna cover rhythmic notation and counting along while you play. Really, really essential stuff. So we're gonna start on the eighth fret of the first string with our middle finger. And you can see that I have a pretty wide vibrato. I've got this really, really heavily accented vibrato that I'm bringing out. Now, if you're new to vibrato, we actually have a super in-depth lesson. I know I keep linking lessons up here, but you definitely wanna check out this lesson on vibrato because it covers different time, types of vibrato. You can have soft and subtle vibrato, or you can have these wide, highly accented vibrato, kind of like what we have for this first hit of this tune. We really want something that just screams and pops and accents it. So I'm using this heavy vibrato on this first one, which is the eighth fret of string one. Remember, that's gonna last a dotted quarter, so we have one and two. So we hold it for a while, then we have the open A, and then we're following that up with the fourth fret of string one to the fifth fret of string one. So I'm just using index to middle. So if I count out that rhythm again, guys, I have one and two, and then on the end of two, so an eighth note, I'm hitting the open A string, and then beat three, fourth fret, beat four, fifth fret. So I have one and two and three, four. Okay, let's give that a shot slowly. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay, so that's bar one. Now bar two, what's cool about it is it follows the same rhythm. We're just playing different notes. So here's what bar two sounds like. 
So you can hear it's very similar. Da, 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 da. So you have the same vibe, same rhythm, but just different notes. So there it is again. So let's cover this one. We can put that same vibrato, maybe not as heavy or it's really up to you guys how much you want to accent it. But we're going to start on that first fret of the first string. And then that, again, lasts a dotted quarter, so we hold it for a little bit. We're going to follow that by playing the open A. And then we're going to go to the fourth fret of string two. And follow that up with the open A. Okay, so we have one and two and three, four. So you have that same rhythm, so keep that in mind. So first fret of string one, then the open A, then string two, fourth fret, and then the open A gay. A <laughs> open A again, if I can enunciate. One and two and three, four. You can keep that held down too because you can hear that the clashing sounds really, really cool when we have a half step apart. So we have one and two and three, four. So let's give that second bar a shot. Here we go, slowly. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay, let's put bars one and two together. Maybe boost up that tempo just a slight bit. So we have three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. So there's our first two bars. Now, for bar three and four, this is gonna be ending one. So remember how I said it has some repetition. So we're gonna play these two bars only one time, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna repeat the same two that we just covered. So before we get there, let's learn bar three and four. So here's what three sounds like, and tell me what you notice about it. It's identical to bar one. So the same thing, we have eight, oh, four, five. So we're playing the same identical bar as bar one for bar three. So let's learn bar four. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, let me count out that rhythm. I have one and two and three, rest. So beat four is a rest. So we're just alternating. So we're gonna take that middle finger, put on that fourth fret of string two. And you're gonna start by playing the first string open, then the second string, remember that's the fourth fret, and then the first string open to the second string, fourth fret, and then finally the first string open. So we have eighth notes for the first half. We have one and two and. Then on beat three, we have an open A, and beat four, we rest. So beat four, you can just take the palm of your hand, touch that first string, and mute it. So you have one and two and three, rest. So let's see if we can do that slowly. Let's try three and four and one and two and three, rest. Okay, so let's see if we can do bar three and four together. So here we go, three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three, rest. Awesome. Now let's backtrack. Let's see if we can go one through four. So remember bar three and four is ending one for this first time through. So here we go, one through four. Three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, rest. So when you get there, going back, you're gonna play bar one and two again, but remember this time in the context of where you're at, it's bar five and six. So after that, you're going to play ending number two, okay? So ending number two sounds like this. So again, a really catchy one that you can get memorized. Da 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 ba ba da da dum. So always good to approach this both ways by playing by ear and understanding the rhythms that you're playing. So let's cover this first bar for the ending number two, which in the context of what we're playing is bar seven. 
So here is bar seven by itself, and then we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so we hear da 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 da. So let's break down what's happening. We have quite a bit of technique happening in this one. So we have hammer on and pull off. So if you're new to that, in the description box below, I'm gonna link a lesson that is an introductory to hammer on and pull off. So this is gonna be predominantly on the A string. So we're gonna play the A string open. So the key thing here is that we're actually plucking one time and all of this stuff is happening from that one pluck. All right, so you see my right hand just does one thing and then the rest of this is with my left hand. So a good way to practice this is to break this hammer on and pull off lick in half. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're, we're just gonna pluck the first string open, so that A string, then you're gonna hammer on to the first fret with your index finger. And then from there you hammer on to the fourth fret with your ring finger. So you have O, one, four, and you can hear this rhythm is all eighth notes. We have one and two and three, four. So eighth notes for the first half, quarter note for the second half. So again, we're just gonna practice the first few hits. We have O, one, four. So you can loop that, right? Let's try and loop it. We have three and four and O, one, four, O, one, four, O, one, four. O, one, four. So you can practice that just to get used to it and get comfortable with a double hammer on. Now from there you can practice the second part. So it's second part is just gonna be basically the opposite of what you just did. So it's four, one, O. Oh. So remember you went up, O, oh, one, four. Now you're going backwards, four, one, O. Oh. Okay, so you can start with that ring finger down. You can pluck this and you can go Four one zero, oh. so just pull offs. Four one zero, oh, four one zero, oh, four one zero. Oh. So you can practice that. So as you see, we cut it in half, and it makes it easier to practice. So again, you can practice o oh, one four, and then you can practice four one zero. Oh. Okay, but eventually you want to put it together. You want to remember that you're plucking only one time. So then you want to get to that point where you're going pluck once. O oh, one four one O. Oh. Okay, and it's important to note that the last open that you pull off to is a quarter note. So we have one and two and three. Okay, the last note of this bar is going to be the fourth fret of string two with your ring finger. That's going to be a quarter note as well. So we put that bar together. We have O oh, one four one O oh, four. If I count up the rhythm. One and two and three, four. Okay, so let's see if we can try that real slow. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Awesome. So just one that you want to practice a lot. Break it in half like we said and then put it together. And if you need a little brush ups on hammer on and pull off technique, check out that lesson in the description box below. So the last bar is all quarter notes and it sounds like this. And you can put a little fermata on the last note, meaning that you're gonna hold it out for as long as you want before you go into melody B. So here's what the last bar sounds like. So you have da, 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 bum, one, two, three, four. And remember that four, that's where we're adding the fermata, where we can hold that out. So this bar starts with an open A, then it's going to go to an A7. Think of it like a G7 chord, that stock G7. If you move that shape up a whole step, it becomes A7. So this is just a movable shape. And if you're new to that, then there's a lesson that covers the caged method. It's all about taking these basic chord shapes and playing them throughout the neck so you break out of this beginning part of the neck. So check out that lesson if you want to learn about moving shapes and playing higher voice chords. So we're gonna take our middle finger, put on the fourth fret of string three, index on the third fret of string two, ring on the fourth fret of string one. So we're gonna target our pluck from the third string down. So it's okay to hit the G open, but we're just gonna target third string down for this. So I'm just plucking using all three fingers. From there, I'm going to be playing a D minor. It's gonna be very easy. You're just gonna take the middle finger. You're gonna bar it 
across the fifth fret strings one, two, and three. So we have a partial bar. So proper form is really important for partial bar chords. So again, if you're new to um, doing bar chords, par uh, partial bar chords where we're not covering all four strings, then I'm gonna put a link to a lesson in the description box below that covers proper left hand form. Really, really vital for getting stuff like this down and nice and clean, especially since it happens at a quick or a brisk tempo. Right, so we wanna make sure our form is correct so everything sounds nice and clean. So again, we had started with the open A, to this A7, which remember is basically a G7 moved up a whole step. Then we just shift up and we lay flat on the fifth fret, strings one, two, and three with the middle finger. Gives us a D minor. We can pluck this again, these three fingers. And then we're gonna end on the second fret of string three with our index finger. And that is where you add the fermata. So you can just hold this out for as long as you want before you jump to the next melody. But the key thing here to remember is that we have quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's try that together. Three, four. One, two, three, four. So if we try seven and eight together, let's give that a shot. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Awesome. So remember, for this second time through, you're playing the same two bars, and then to the second ending. Okay, so if we try everything, one through eight, let's give it a shot. Three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, one and two and three, rest. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, four. All right guys, so that covers everything for melody A. Let's jump into melody B. Melody B is pretty much straight out of this A7, but it's utilizing that scale we covered and the intro of the lesson. So it actually begins with just a four finger strum roll on this A7. So that four finger strum roll basically is just one finger at a time. So if I slow it down, you can see I'm going pinky, third, second, first, just one at a time, kind of like that. It's like a flick, right? It's a four finger little flick. That's why they call it a roll. So you just want to practice slow, getting each finger to work independent of each other. And you can see it's over that A7, it's just the index on the first fret of string three. Everything else is open. So you just want to practice slow and gradually increase your speed but that's just gonna last for that entire bar and you can be loose on the time you don't have to be like one two three four right so you know feel free to not be like restricted to the temp uh, to the tempo or to the beat for this first part it's kind of just an accent and then you can go like actually into the song whenever you feel like it so it's kind of kind of like that fermata effect again, so you just want to you know, hold it out to taste. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual melody of it, but remember just have that little accent for the first hit. And this I believe is one, two, three, four, four bars times two. So again, we have eight bars in length, some repetition, but this time around, the repetition is a bit different. You're going to play bar one through three. So bar four is ending one. And then you go back and play bar one through three again. And then you have an ending two for the eighth bar. So that's how our repetition falls for melody B. So let's break bar one. Let's, let's break bar one down. Here's what it sounds like. And then we'll learn it. Okay, so almost all 16th notes. So the first hit is an eighth note. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Okay, so you wanna get that stuck in your head. Just 
da 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 get that rhythm stuck in your head one and a two e and a three e and a four e and a you can see all out of that a7 chord too so that first finger literally stays anchored and then I'm playing all those melody notes around it so our right hand technique, we need to talk about that first before we actually dive in and learn it. Our right hand technique, first one we can start with just a basic strum, but then I like to use some of this flicking technique. Now if you watched our last finger picking etude, number 11, which came out like a month or so ago, that really dived into this flick approach that I like to do. I like this flick approach because it has a really bright pop, harsher kind of tone versus if you were to pluck, pluck's a warmer, softer sound. And for something like this, we really want something that just pops. So this flick approach is really great for that. So I like to flick with the nail of the, th the finger. So I'm using the nail of the middle finger for down and then the nail of the thumb for up. So I'm going one and uh, so remember, eighth followed by sixteenth. So one and uh, so all you want to practice right now is just a down strum, regular down strum. Again, I'm using the nails to make it pop. So I'm strumming down, and then I'm going flick, flick. So down, up, middle thumb, one and uh. So let's try that together. We have three and a four and a one and uh. Okay, so strum down up, strum middle thumb. So that's something you just want to practice, this little flick approach if it's new to you. It's really cool sounding. So the next part is going to continue with this right hand attack where we're flicking down. Now, the thing you're going to notice is that we're literally jumping between playing off the first string and playing off the fourth string. We're not playing any of these middle strings. So we're literally just playing first to four, first to four, first to four. It's kind of like an alternating thing. It sounds like this. Okay, so you can see I'm ignoring these strings in the middle, string three and two. So I'm going to continue with the flick approach, but one thing that you can try is to try and flick with your ring finger. So same concept, the nail of the ring finger, because then you can keep your hand in this claw shape. So you see with this claw shape, each finger gets its own string. So I have thumb, first, second, ring finger. If I stay in this claw shape, then I'm gonna minimize the movement of my right hand and increase my accuracy. I can continue with the same approach of doing a flick, but this time around, maybe I can do the flick with my nail of the ring finger. So check it out. If I go one to zero, if I'm gonna flick down with the ring finger and do a pull off, so I have a flick and a pull off, it keeps my thumb in position to pluck the fourth string open, and then I can come back and I can pluck the first string open. So remember that pattern for 2 E enda is just 1, 0, oh, 4, 0. Oh. So I have 1, 0, oh, 4, first string, right? 1, 0, 0, 0. But you notice that I'm not moving a lot with my right hand. That's the key. So I'm really minimizing movement, increasing accuracy. So what you want to practice is just flicking with the ring finger, the nail of the ring finger, flick down pull off, pluck the fourth string open, and then pluck the first string open with the ring finger. Okay, so that's the technique that I'm using. Now, I think it's challenging, especially if you're new to this kind of flick approach. So I'm gonna give you an alternate way in a second. But let's see if we can backtrack and try the first half of this bar. So we have three and a four and a one and a two E and a... So again, three and a four and a strum and a two E and a... So let me give you an easier way to do this. And the easier way is... I'm not worried about accuracy, you can hear that more strings are ringing out. So I'm not playing so clean where it's one string. That's really clean. 
if I don't care too much about that, and I want to just make the right hand movement easier, then you can see it's basically like a strum attack, with the only difference being that your thumb will hit the fourth string open when it pops up in the bar. So in essence, I'm literally doing a down strum on beat one, two, three, four. And this makes it really easy. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... You can kind of target that strum from three down, but it's less precision, makes it easier to play for the right hand and you get a different sound, right? So the first way is if we want to play it super clean, where single notes are the predominant force of it, right? Versus the second way is more of like kind of a rhythmic thing where we have strumming ringing out throughout it. So I'll leave it up to you guys. There's no right or wrong. You can work on both approaches, but the second one's easier. So just food for that. So let's do this. Let's see if we can tackle the second half of this bar. And remember all 16th, so we have three and a four and a. So go back to that A7. We're gonna just take that pinky, put on the fourth fret string one. So we have four O, pull off. So I'm just gonna demonstrate using the clean approach. So four O and then open G to open A. So three E and a. And then we're back to using the middle finger for the first fret of string one, where we do one O, four O. So you can see that pattern literally for the second, for two, three, and four, it beats two, three, and four, is literally just one O, 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 four O, 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 one O, 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 right? So you wanna just get that stuck in your head. You can even practice it like that, two E and a three E and a four E and a but eventually you wanna keep that A7 intact so it just sustains throughout all of this. So let's see if we can try three and four together. So here we go slowly. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Okay, and if we try the entire bar together, three and a four and a one, Okay, so that is probably the hardest thing to get down with that right hand technique. The rest of this melody B follows suit. So let me play bar two, and it's basically the same first half. So the first half is identical, but the second half is a little variation. So it's a walk down lick on the first string. Here's what bar two sounds like. Okay, so we start the first half the same. So you have one and a two E and a... So all that's identical. So when you get to beat three, you're going to the seventh fret of string one. So remember, all in string one. So we can do the same flick approach where it's down with the nail of the middle finger, up with the nail of the thumb. So we're gonna go seven to five. So that's a slide. So you just go one hit. After that, you're going to the fourth fret. So play that note and then the fifth fret. So I have, so I've got down, slide, and then down, up for my right hand. Okay, so just like that. Seven, five, four, five. Now for beat four, we're gonna lift that middle finger up, so we're gonna go four to one. And then that's gonna do a pull off, so you literally just need to go one down hit and pull off to the open A. Remember that open A is gonna last an eighth note, so twice as long buys you more time to jump back into A7. So together you have seven, five, four, five, four, one, oh. So I have down, slide, down, up, down, slide, open. Okay, let's give that a shot slowly, starting on beat three. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Awesome. Now we want to try and put that bar together. Remember, the first half is the same as bar one. So we've got that down. Let's give it a shot. Three and a four and a one and a two E and a three E and a four E and. 
Okay, maybe we should slow it down just a hair. Three, and uh, four, and uh, one, and uh, two E, and uh, three E, and uh, four E, and... Okay, so that covers the second bar. Let's try one and two together. Three, and uh, four, and uh, one, and uh, two E, and uh, three E, and uh, four E, and uh, one, and uh, two E, and uh, three E, and uh, four E, and... So here's the really great thing. Bar three is actually identical to bar one. Everything is the same. So we already know that, so let's cover bar four. Remember, bar four is ending one. So after you get done with this bar four, you're going back, you're playing bars one through three, what we just covered, and then you go into ending two for bar eight. But let's cover bar four first. Bar four, all 16th notes, the entire thing. So keep that in mind. We want to keep our rhythm steady, and each note lasts the same duration. So here's what this bar sounds like. All right, let's break it down. Let's cover the first half. And actually, let's cover the first set. So one E and a. So I'm going to start with that little flick approach. And I'm using the nail to hit down the nail of the middle finger. And I'm going to pull off five to four on string one. OK, so middle to index. After that, and the rest of the lick, I'm using a two to a three finger approach. So when I'm using a two finger approach, I'm using the thumb and the middle finger. And then we're gonna to get to this little alternate finger picking approach, but let's wait on that for a second. So I'm starting with the nail of the middle finger, flick down, pull off five to four, then taking the ring finger, put it in on six on string two. So I'm gonna hit that with the thumb, and then I'm gonna play string one again, which remember is still the index finger on four. So I have Pull off six, four. So you can just loop that. One E and a, one E and a, one E and a. And if we want to use the attack though, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. Okay, so pretty simple for the first part. Now the second two E and a, let's cover that. It's going to be six on string two. So you're playing that note with the thumb, and then you lift up, and we're gonna play the open A as a regular pluck with the middle finger. So we've got six to open A. Then to finish it up, we're gonna go four to five on string two. So we have a hammer on, so we're gonna use the thumb to pluck that. So if we look at the second half, we have six, oh, four, five, six, oh, four, five. Okay, so again, six on two, open A, four hammer on the five, so pluck once. All right, so let's see if we can try the first half of this. So we have one E and a, two E and a, but of course slow. So five, four, six, four, six, oh, four, five. All right, you and I, really saw three E and a, four E and go. One E and a, two E and a. Okay, so again, five, four, six, four, six, oh, four, five. Okay, so when you get to that hammer on on the five, this is where I mentioned we're going to start doing this alternating picking approach that we see a lot in classical style guitar. Um, if you've been doing our U bass lessons, they use the same approach. So it's just alternating between using middle finger, then index. You can see it allows you to pluck faster the same string instead of going one finger. So it's a really cool approach. It also frees up this thumb to play another string. So if you're new, you will probably want to just practice. You can use open strings. You can go second, first, first, second, first, first, second, first, first. just to get used to that approach. So we're keeping that five held down where we're at. So for beat three, we're starting on two plucks of the open A, second, then first finger. And then we're gonna do that same hammer on again with the thumb. So you have O, O, hammer. Okay, so O, O, hammer. 
This whole time though, we're keeping that middle finger on the fifth fret. Just helps us stabilize the neck too, so we don't drop it. So let me play uh, the first part going into beat three, and you can see how that middle finger stays on five when I get to the alternate finger picking. Right, so it just helps me stabilize and hold the neck steady. So again, B3 is three E and uh, O, O, four, five. Okay, let's try that to go. Two E and go. Three E and uh. Okay, the last fourth beat we have, again, starting with the double pluck of the A, then four on string two, and open A. So this time, no hammer on. We're gonna end on the open A, because that'll buy us more time to jump back to the first part. So again, beat four, we have pluck, pluck, four, O. Oh. So, O, oh, O, oh, four, O. Oh. Okay, let's try that. Three, E, and A. Uh. Four, E, and A. Uh. All right, so if we try beat three and four, two, E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. If we try the entire bar, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Definitely one that you want to practice and slow down. Very, very tricky because it's that 16th note rhythm. But remember, you don't have to play as fast as I did on performance. Start slow, work it up to speed. Always the best approach with tricky uh, tunes like this that are at a quicker tempo. So now that we've got that done, let's try bar three and four, then we'll go one through four. So here we go, three to four. Three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two e and uh, three. Really, really cool stuff. You can use that YouTube, uh, click that little cog to slow it down too. So if you wanna practice that at 75% of the YouTube speed, that's a really great approach. Um, but let's go ahead and try one through four. Three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two e and uh, three. Now keep in mind that bar four is ending one. So you're gonna go back, you're gonna play those first three bars identical, and then you go into ending number two, which is bar eight. And bar eight is already something we know. The second ending of melody A was. And that rhythm was one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, ending two here, compresses it. So you're playing everything identical, but twice as fast. So what was once eighth notes, now is 16th notes. And what was once quarter notes, now is eighth notes. So you have one E and a two and three and four and. So it's the same thing though, the same exact playing, but your rhythm is just twice as fast. So you have O one four one O four O A sev D minor second fret, and again on that second fret, you can do a little fermata, so you can hold it out for as long as you wish. But it's the same thing. Just keep in mind that we're playing it twice as fast to fit this rhythm of this melody B. So let's give it a shot. Three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two and three. Okay, so if we try the last part, let's see if we can do that. Let's go bars five, six, seven, and eight. Three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two e and uh, three and uh, four e and uh, one and uh, two e and uh, three and uh, four e and one and uh, two e and uh, three and uh, four e and uh, one e and uh, 
two and three and four and. So that gives us the second half. So now we've got melody B covered. So that's where we're going to wrap up this lesson, which was part one. So in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com, so you can click this link right here, that's going to cover melody C, that really cool haunting melody. So we're going to be learning that in its entirety in the part two lesson. Don't forget, at that page, you can also get the tabs to print off and follow along with as a PDF format and get access to that on-screen tab here, that really cool tab player where you can interact with it, where you can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down to any speed. Really, really great asset, especially for working on stuff that was really hard, like that lick. So really, really, really good tool for getting stuff like this tuned down. And pretty much every song. I mean, learning is, is difficult um, when you first get started, but you know, as you practice and practice, practice, everything gets easier. So that little tap player is super helpful. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the part two lesson. Thanks.